Well, Janelle, thanks very much for joining us here on The Asian Game. It's an absolute pleasure having you on the show with us today. Uh, you're over there in Germany after securing that uh, that move to Borussia Dortmund. Congratulations on that. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about the move, how it came about, and, and how you're settling into life in Germany so far? Yeah, I think I've, I've settled in very well. Um, you know, I've had... I've had two weeks of good training with the team, getting to know the players, brushing up on my German, um, which has been a bit of a struggle um, because my my first language is English, and so to trans you know transfer into sort of a world that only speaks German, it was pretty tough at first. But I think I think I'm getting the hang of it. I'm understanding what's happening in training a bit more, um, and so I think I've settled into a very nice routine. <laughs> what words of German have you picked up so far? <laughs> so I know how to count to. 10 um so that's really helpful like when the coaches say like 7v7 or three touches at least i know what's happening um and then left and right links and wrecks i I think i can (laughs) i can pick up on those as well yeah (laughs) tell us more about the move because it's a massive move massive opportunity for you going to borussia dortmund one of the the biggest clubs in in world football So, so tell us how excited were you when the opportunity came about and it became a reality that it was going to happen. How excited were you? Yeah, I was, so I was obviously very excited. You know, you mentioned Dortmund is such a huge club, so much history behind it as well. Um, and so when I, I had the uh, opportunity of going to Dortmund to watch a Champions League game in February. Um, and so that was against Chelsea and, you know, just to see, feel the atmosphere and you know so I, I was able to see the, the the yellow wall live and it's it's the stuff of legends right you know you see it all over instagram on youtube and you see it all over the internet but to see it live to really see all these fans jumping up and down um you know singing for their club the entire game it was it was really magical and so that was something that really you know tipped the balance for me when i was making my decision to to come here um, and so yeah it was i was obviously very excited and i'm happy to get cracking now that I'm here um, and just work hard. Mm. You, you mentioned the yellow wall. There it is. It's the stuff of legend in, in football, particularly in, in Germany and across Europe. And we've seen massive crowds in, in women's football recently. A lot of it in Germany. Too, and I know Bayern Munich have got some, some massive crowds. So if we think about the, the, the prospect of potentially playing in, in front of that one day if Dortmund were to, to take a game there and, and get a massive crowd. I mean, how much does the, the prospect of that motivate and excite you that that might be a possibility to actually play in front of it one day? Oh, it, it definitely does. I mean, you know, k- young kids, we grow up dreaming of these kind of things, right? You know, playing with a full sold out stadium, people, you know, chanting and, and singing for your club and, and supporting you. It's, it's the stuff you grew up dreaming of, right? Um, and so to for it to actually be possible, especially in the women's game now, I think it's it's something that is so special and it's really representative of the growth of the women's game. And so it's, it's a really nice thing to see. You mentioned there growing up dreaming of, of these opportunities. I mean, when you're a, a young girl, I mean, you're still only young, you're only 18 years of age, but when you were even younger than you are now, um, a, a young girl, six, seven, eight year old in Singapore, could you ever dream that this might become a reality to go to Europe and play for a club like Borussia Dortmund? No, I would say, I mean, <laughs> it's, I guess when I when I started playing, it was I mean football was purely recreational. You know, it was just it was just for fun. I I didn't even I wouldn't even say I didn't even dream of becoming a professional footballer because it simply didn't seem like a viable career path then. So when I was you know when I was growing up, I didn't see any females playing on TV. I didn't I didn't even know becoming a professional f- female footballer was was a thing really. Um, and so to say to dream of something like that 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 would have been impossible. Um, but it's really nice to see now that, you know, we're sort of on at the cusp of like exponential growth of the women's women's game. You know, you see the Women's World Cup, the Women's Euros, and then the top three most watched games in European football are all women's games. Um, and it's, so it's, it's great to see the growth of the women's game that now young kids can really dream of becoming a professional footballer. Whereas when I was six, seven years old, I I never, I, I never, you know, thought of it as as a dream. It was more when I, you know, was growing up and exploring opportunities. I was like, oh, you know, this is actually possible. Um, yeah. So I know I, I didn't dream of, and I don't think I ever would have thought it possible then. Mm. Uh, so how does it make you feel then, knowing that you're a, a role model 
for the the next generations, for the the six year olds that are in Singapore at the moment? How does it make you feel knowing that you're a role model for for that next generation of female footballers coming through? Yeah, I think it's a it's a huge honor for me. Um, so I'm the women's football ambassador in Singapore as well, and so it's you know it's it's a huge honor at a, at a young age to be able to be a role model for all these young girls. Um, and it's, you know, trailblazing a path for them as well to show them that it is possible. And it's not just, you know, your Megan Rapino, Sam Kerr's from around the world that there is, well, hopefully I'm showing that there is, you know, people like them in Singapore um, that are doing it and that, that it is possible from, for girls like them. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a huge honor for me and it's, it's a huge responsibility as well. Um, but I, I, I think, um, yeah, it brings me great pride to, to be able to do it. Hmm. Tell us how challenging is the situation for women's football in Singapore at the moment? I mean, we see Singapore struggle in football, in, in men's football, and you know traditionally that's always you know more, more well financed and resourced than it is for women's football. You know, we we know the challenges that there are in in Singapore. There's a lot of external pressures. You know pressure to you know do good academically which sometimes comes to the detriment of, of you know participating in in sport there's so many external factors how challenging is the the situation and the landscape for female footballers and and women's football in Singapore at the moment um well I mean I mean like you said you know it's a it's a very small country um, and so the talent pool is is small and and so the competition is not as high and so for me when I was you know, thinking about becoming a professional footballer, I knew that the question, the question of moving overseas and challenging myself was not so much a question of if it was more a question of when. Um, and so I would say, you know, right now, Singapore is not at the stage that you may, I mean, there's no professional leagues f- for women. Um, and so if you really want to pursue a, a path in football, you have to move overseas. And so that's that's, I would say, one of the biggest challenges because it's it's a huge sacrifice, right? You know, moving away from family, from friends, um, and then living alone, um, it's a huge sacrifice. And so that I would say that's one of the biggest challenges. We've spoken a lot so far about your move to, to Dortmund and understandably so, but you actually spent time in, in the UK, in England recently as well. So t- tell us about that experience. It was a, it was a, really, it was a really good experience for me. Um, huge learning curve. I was playing at London Bees, which is the third, in, in the third tier of women's football in England. Um, and so it was it was a lot more physical. The game was a lot more physical than I was used to in Singapore. And so that was something that I really had to improve and work on when I was there. Um, but I, I I met some great friends. I learned a lot. And so it was, yeah, I look back on those times only with, with, with a huge smile on my face. Mm. I just want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier that the, the sacrifice of, of having to leave home to go to Europe to chase your dream how difficult has that been for you because I mentioned before you're only 18 years of age so the sacrifice to go to Europe um, I, I assume on your own but to, to go to Europe um, at such a young age I was looking at your Instagram before you, you seem incredibly close to your family so how challenging has it been for you to have to leave all of that behind to go to England first now to, to Germany to to chase that dream yeah so I moved to the UK at the start of 2022 so when I was still 17 um, and and like you said I, I'm a very homebody in the sense I, I, I spent a lot of time at home with my family I'm very close to my family um, and so it was really tough and especially with the the time differences when I came back from school in the UK a lot of my family would be sleeping because it would be like 12 a.m there um, and so you know, the first few months I really struggled, um, but at least I think with with the with with the internet, with WhatsApp, um, it's a lot easier to still keep in touch with a lot of my friends and family. Um, and so I'd still I'd still call my parents every day, every morning uh, before going to school. So I think I mean I think it's a lot easier now, um, but it was still a challenge initially. Mm. Well, let's finish now by talking about the the Women's World Cup that's going on here in Australia and New Zealand at the moment. It's been a remarkable success, particularly you know in terms of the crowds. Um, we, we look at the crowd at the Colombia Germany game the other night. You know, forty thousand in in Sydney for Colombia Germany, and capturing all the passion that you would expect it to see back in South America or wherever else in the world. It's it's remarkable stuff. You look at what the the Philippines had been able to achieve as well with their victory. And they got 34,000 to their clash against Norway to, to finish their campaign. Um, 
Does seeing a, a fellow Southeast Asian side like the Philippines and, and what they were able to achieve, does that inspire and, and motivate you for your own career and, and your own opportunities ahead? Oh, it definitely does. You know, I mean, so I've played against the likes of Philippines just recently last year as well. Um, and so not only does it motivate me, it also shows the level that you need to get to. And, you know, like Philippines being able to compete against uh, nations around the world, it shows like the level that you need to get to. And so to be able to compete with them um, regionally, it's, you know, it's, that's, that's, that's what footballers do, right? You have to keep pushing to see the level you go, you need to get to. And so when I moved overseas, for example, that's, that was something that I, what that was on my mind that I have to get to the level of these girls, my age around the world to see, you know, what, what the level was like. Um, and then to, for Philippines to go out there and do so well in the world cup, that's like the next standard, right? And so when I play against them, that's the standard I'm aiming for and and um, and pushing towards. And so it's really nice to see them competing and and doing well, um, because obviously you know I'm Asian myself, and so it's 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 also really nice to you know see Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries as well, doing well in the World Cup. So who are you cheering for at this World Cup? Is it the Asian teams that you you just mentioned there? Yeah, yeah, I think I, I'll put my some of my money on Japan as well. I think they have a really good chance. Um, and obviously they're from Asia as well. So yeah, I think I'd, I'd support Japan. And I like, I like, I like the way they play as well. It's not so physical because they're quite s small. Um, but you know, they play very nice technical football and it's, and it's just a joy to watch. Right. So I, I yeah, I, I think I'd be supporting Japan. Is, is, is that how you would describe yourself as a footballer? That's the, the, the kind of football that you like and the kind of footballer that you would, that you would want to be. Yeah, I think tech, like technically that's definitely one of my strengths um and because i've i've never really been like the biggest player on the team and so physicality wasn't my wasn't like my strong suits and so it would be you know watching these technical players and trying to see what i can take from their game um because i knew that again some of the europeans and the you know bigger goals that there was no way I could compete physically and just finally we, we've spoken about the the women's world cup and the, the superstars that are here playing at the moment um were there any players in particular when when you were younger that you that you looked up to and you, you idolized and, and tried to mold your game on yeah it's funny so so I mean like I mentioned like you know when I was growing up there was no women's football on tv or I, I wouldn't be able to watch them um, but I think as I you know as as the women's game has grown that, that coverage has increased as well. And so one of my favorite players was Viviana Miedema. Uh So unfortunately she tore her ACL and she's not featuring in the World Cup this year. Um, but, you know, she's a very lethal striker. And so she's somebody that I've tried to, you know, pick a few things off her game to try and implement in mine and someone that I really enjoy watching.